Hi, my name is Leslie, and I would like to share with you my experiences in the clinical mental health counseling program at Antioch University and my concerns that graduates of this program may be unprepared to serve their clients as counselors based on the training that they've received. Counselors are being trained not to remain objective and neutral with their clients, but rather to see themselves as agents of social change and to view their clients as opportunities for imprinting extreme left-wing views. And I say this as someone who's always considered myself to be socially and politically liberal. Um, Antioch has almost entirely replaced classical notions of education and psychology with social justice ideology. I'll give you some examples of how that plays out in counselor training. We were taught that our main role as counselors is not in our work with clients, individuals, and families, but rather as activists for social justice. We were taught to assess ourselves and our clients according to something called the addressing model. This uses the word addressing as an acronym with each letter standing for a different demographic category. So age, disability, um, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, um, nationality, gender identity, socioeconomic status, et cetera. And for each of these, categories, we are to um, give ourselves either a value of marginalized or privileged and do the same for our clients, and then add these up and see who's more privileged. And this teaches you how you're supposed to interact with your client. And if either of you, if one of you is white and the other is not, then automatically that's the trump card. And so the non-white person is the marginalized person, no matter what the other categories say. And this sounds absolutely crazy, but this is actually what they are teaching in a graduate level clinical applied psychology program to future counselors. This is how you are to understand yourself and the person to whom you are speaking. We were taught to broach race early in the clinical relationship, preferably within the first session. And what that means is that no matter what the client is coming in for, um, could be relationship issues, depression, um, bereavement, any number of things that a person might come in to see a counselor for, you are to bring that conversation around to race. And if the person, you say you're a Black person and you're coming in, I'm supposed to say to you, how does it feel to you, a Black person, to sit with me, a white person, as your counselor? And then if if this if it doesn't seem like it's a big deal to you and it doesn't seem like race has been playing a big role in the issues that you're facing, I'm supposed to help increase, this is what we were told, increase your racial identity salience, which means making you more aware of how race, white supremacy, and systemic racism has impacted the problems that you're having today. And if you're a white person, I'm supposed to help you see how you have been perpetrating white supremacy knowingly and unknowingly against people of color instead of helping you work on the problems that you are bringing in or it, in order to steer your problems into a racial discussion. I had a professor at Antioch uh, for a multicultural perspectives class, which was basically a social justice training class who called white women basic bitches, Beckys, and nothing special and told us that white women's tears have been overvalued. Antioch also promotes racial segregation among students, frequently inviting us to join either a BIPOC affinity group or a white affinity group. The white group used to be called an accountability group, but they've changed that language. They've softened it a little, I guess. Uh, they also are promoting language which would change the word woman, replace the word woman with the term AFAB, people with vulvas. Uh, AFAB stands for assigned female at birth. So instead of woman, AFAB, people with vulvas. Um, they promote the concept of the trans child as well, which uh, would, which means that the ch according to Antioch's teachings, children can know from very early in life that they are transgender and that as a counselor, it's your job to affirm and help them <clears throat> on their path to physical alterations of their bodies, not to explore with them what's going on and why they feel the way that they do and help them to become comfortable with their, with their physical body without 
drugs and surgeries. The Chancellor of Antioch also sends out frequent emails in response to social uh, current events in, in politics and culture. And these are editorials. Um, most recent one was about renaming Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And these emails tell us in really strong language how we are supposed to feel and respond and, and act in, a, in response to these events. Um, there's no attempt at neutrality. There's no attempt at um, remaining politically objective. These are left-wing political talking points. And it seems to me so highly inappropriate that this person uses their access to the entire student body uh, worth of emails to spread their political points across, you know, far and wide. It's like a, a bullhorn. And I've, I've tried, I've responded to these and I get dismissals. I have reached out to my faculty advisor about my concerns about the program. I've reached out to the chair of the department. I have filed grievances with the provost. All of my concerns are being dismissed. Most recently, the faculty advisor um, admitted to me that they are aware that they are not training counselors who are going to be able to work with, in her words, the Trump supporter. So they, this is turning counseling into a profession that seeks to remake you, the client, in one political ideological form and pathologize alternative ways of thinking and, and sociocultural political viewpoints. I, I have almost finished this degree. I only have a few classes left to take and I'm finding myself kind of at a stopping point right now because they've instituted a civility pledge, which is a pledge to social justice ideology. It's uh, being aware of racism, ableism, heterosexism, et cetera, et cetera and uh, privileged and marginalized identities. I cannot sign this pledge. I do not agree with this ideology. I will not sign this pledge just to, just because they have my master's degree held hostage. I hope that people are starting to become aware of just how significant this cultural takeover is, uh, this divisive and hateful ideology. This is the implications for mental health care for people seeking mental health services, for people going to college or sending their kids to, to school are huge. I, I really hope people will take this seriously and let's put a stop to this nonsense. Let's bring back sanity. Thank you for listening.